Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and in today's video I want to answer a question that you guys ask ever so often on my live streams. That is, what is the reason why we sometimes keep the flaps extended after landing in the Airbus family aircraft? And there are actually several different reasons for this. We're going to start with the one that you will probably have seen in the real world already when you flew to holidays. So we're currently standing here in Bari in southern Italy and the temperature is rather hot over here. If we do go into the flight deck real quick, you can see that right now it's 30 degrees centigrade. So this is exactly the boundary from which we start to leave our flaps extended in the first case. That's when the temperature is 30 degrees centigrade or above. Now why do we do this and what does it look like? Let's take a quick view over on our flaps because they actually do look quite impressive when we are um, doing the walk around and seeing them from below. So this is what they look like in the OnePlus F position and the reason we're leaving them in OnePlus F and why I am showing you this from this perspective in first place is because on the ground during hot weather conditions overheating may be detected in the bleed duct in the wings resulting in the ECAM air left or right wing leak alert. Such alerts may be avoided during transit by keeping the slats in config 1 when the OAT is above 30 degrees centigrade. So what exactly does um, happen here? Well, you guys know that our aircraft does have a wing anti-ice and the wing anti-ice works by pumping hot air from the engine bleeds into the leading edges of the wing. Now obviously pumping hot air that's in some cases two or three hundred degrees hot into the wing has the potential to cause quite some trouble if that hot air gets into areas where it's definitely not supposed to be. Think fuel tank. For this reason a bleed um, air monitoring system is installed which detects overheating in the leading edges of the wing as well as in other areas where this hot air is getting transferred. Now since during days like the ones we have today it's 30 degrees outside the sun is hot and burning right onto our wing since the area inside the wing can already start heating up quite a bit there is a certain chance that the false positive may be triggered over here and the wing or the air wing leak alert might be triggered. To avoid this, we do extend the slats over here so that the slats can cast a shadow onto the leading edge of the wing below them and this shadow is sufficient to prevent this overheating from happening as the heat can no longer transfer directly between the slats that heat up and the area in the shadow below. Now let's talk about the second reason why we might leave the flaps extended and this is because of icing conditions. So if the approach was flown in icing conditions and it is suspected that ice might have built up on our slats and flaps then we do leave them extended in order to avoid any possible damage happening to the drive mechanisms that are extending and retracting them. So you can see if ice is building up over here if ice is building up on those edges here and then you retract the flaps first of all you could damage the actual mechanism that you can find down here and you could also damage the actual structures themselves by trying to retract the um, flaps which are now larger than they were previously due to the ice that has formed on them into an area where there simply is no space for that ice so damages can happen because of ice and in such conditions when it is really cold and when you have icing conditions on your approach then you're going to keep the um, flaps and flaps extended after landing and only after the ground crew has confirmed that the flaps and flaps are clear of obstructions due to ice then you are going to retract the flaps after engine shutdown. But this needs an inspection from the ground crew or from the pilots. Some airlines make their pilots do these inspections during the walk around as well. But this inspection is um, required in case you've been approaching during icing conditions. Now let's talk of 
the last possible case why this might happen. And for this one, we actually don't have to view the wing from this side, but much rather, we have to view it from this side. And that's the opposite direction of flight. That's where the birds come from. So a bird strike is another reason to leave the flux extended. If a bird strike does happen, then you never know where any residues of a bird might have gotten. And just in case the bird is stuck anywhere where possible damage could be caused by a retraction of the flap. Say for example you have bones of the birds in some of these um, smaller confined areas over here. Again, for the very same reason why ice is a danger, residues of birds may also pose a danger. So you keep the flaps extended after a bird strike after or during the approach and landing as well. Now, the only difference there is the bird strike on takeoff. In that case, you would retract the flaps because you just can't see if you actually hit something from the cockpit. And you would be surprised by how often we actually see birds fly very close by the aircraft where you can't be 100% sure if something happened. And if you would just abort all of these flights for the simple reason of having to check if the bird strike actually happened before retracting the flaps, that would actually exceed the cost of the occasional damage that could happen in case you had a bird strike and you do retract them. There is a second reason why you keep the flaps extended after a bird strike as well, and that's in, imagine if the bird gets stuck somewhere where it might be hard to see. Let's say, for example, the bird gets um, stuck right in between the flap and the spoilers above it. If you would now retract the flaps, you might not even be able to see the bird strike in first case, and therefore might not carry out the bird strike inspection that would be needed after any bird strike. For this reason, if you do suspect one, keep the flaps extended, do your walk around after landing, and if you are unable to see any residues of the bird, that's when you would start retracting your flaps. I do hope that you found this one interesting. Let me know your feedback in the comments below. I would like to thank you very much for listening. Hope that you learned something today. I hope I've been able to answer your questions, and I'm looking forward to see you guys again on the next one. Now let's get back on board. We are going to fly back towards Düsseldorf now. And with all of that, I would like to say thank you very much for being on board today. As always, if you found the video interesting, leave your feedback in the comments below the video, as your feedback really helps me to tailor my videos towards what you guys want to see. And, well, that out of the way, be sure to like, comment and subscribe, as it does really help out the channel. And if you really like what I'm doing on this channel, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me a Coffee link in the video description below. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and I see you all again on the next one.